I didn't know it yet, but over the next two nights, I would capture my best astrophoto ever. Hi there everyone, my name's Luke and welcome to my channel. So after quite a long period of extremely bad astronomy weather, it looks like it's actually going to clear up for two nights in a row. I hope that you'll join me as I try and make the absolute most of these two and take my best ever image, hopefully, of the Cygnus wall in NGC 7000. While everything's cooling down and I'm waiting for it to get dark enough that I can perform polar alignment, uh, I just thought I'd take a moment to talk to you about the equipment I'm going to be using tonight to take this photograph. Many of you will already be familiar with this, but for anyone who is new and watching this, uh, this is for you. So, the telescope I'm using is a Skywatcher Esprit 120 Super Apo Triplet, uh, and basically all I have to say about this thing is it's been fantastic. It, it's just everything I could have ever dreamed of in a scope, and I'm so happy to own it. Attached to that, I'm going to be shooting through the ZWO 2600MC Pro Colour. Um, I've, I've been through mono and colour cameras a few times now, and uh, while mono certainly has its benefits, uh, so does colour too, at least in my usage case. And uh, I certainly have no regrets there purchasing that thing. It's been fantastic. Again, right from day one, I've been extremely lucky with my equipment. Um, the filter I'm going to be shooting through tonight, as we're shooting an emission nebula, um, is actually going to be an Optolong L Extreme, and that's going to let through just two bandpasses of light, and they're going to be in hydrogen and oxygen. So it's effectively like having two narrowband filters on one piece of glass, which allows you to uh, maximize your data capture in any given night when you're using a color camera. It's 11 p.m. now, uh, and as you can probably tell by looking just behind me here, I've got the flat panel on the end of the scope, and I'm just taking some fresh flats since I changed to the L Extreme filter uh, from last time out, which was actually shooting the Iris Nebula, for any of you who saw that video, where of course I used just a clear filter, um, just UV IR cut. So yeah, I'm going to get those finished. I am actually plate solved to the target now, uh, and I've performed an autofocus before taking these flats and uh, yeah I'm ready to get started now I'm uh, wanting to make every single minute count Alright guys, so it's about 20 to 2 in the morning now and I thought I'd give you all a little bit of an update and let you know how the night's been progressing so far. Um, currently I have just over 2 hours of exposure completed, uh, I'm shooting with 10 minute exposures, 
tonight through the L Extreme. And uh, yeah, it's all been going quite smoothly. There's there's been the occasional cloud passing through, uh, which made me rush outside after a year uh, PhD guide in doing its famous um, warning sound, the, the kind of like the bong, <laughs> which uh, usually signals the end of your session. But fortunately tonight that wasn't really the case. Just kind of, uh, as I said, passing clouds. Um, but yeah, so. I guess something interesting about tonight's target is I, I've already shot it earlier this year with this same camera and filter and telescope. Um, I did it as part of another video, uh, quite a long one where I was talking about sharp cap live stacking and uh, electronically assisted astronomy, EAA for short. And uh, in that video I basically put two hours of live stacked exposures in sharp cap uh, on this target and I was using two minute exposures at a very high gain. And uh, just thinking about that kind of jogged my memory and it's something a few people have been asking about. Um, how do you come to the conclusion of uh, what you're gonna settle on in terms of exposure length for any given target and things like that. And I guess I can touch upon that now for you all, for anybody interested. So to get started straight away, I guess uh, the easiest like path of least resistance uh, into finding an ex acceptable exposure length would be for you to download SharpCap Pro. Uh, it does come with a small license fee, but it's well worth it because of the other things it gives you, polar alignment, etc. But basically as a tool, uh, the brain tool, and what that'll do is measure the background brightness of your sky. Uh, it asks you to point to kind of a, a featureless region of sky, and it takes a few test exposures and measures how bright your sky is at that time. And from that, it can figure out how long of an exposure will be needed to effectively swamp any electronic noise created by your camera and its sensor. And the reason that's important is basically if you're taking exposures that are too short, um, any signal that you're actually trying to record can be lost within the camera's inherent noise. Uh, and it's very, very hard to like dig out any of that signal then, even through stacking. Whereas with a sufficiently long exposure, uh, any signal that's recorded per frame will sufficiently swamp that noise that's inherent and become very easy to stack indeed. Um, that said, I guess the way how I do it, I don't actually use the brain, I just take a test exposure. Um, I basically have got my target in mind, I might have a look at what magnitude the object is using uh, such as uh, Stellarium, and that'll kind of, if you click on the object, it'll tell you a number uh, denoting the magnitude of the object. Uh, a lower number is a brighter object. Um, but that might give you some uh, straight indicator to let you know uh, what you're dealing with. So if it's a magnitude 18 galaxy or something, you know it's going to be incredibly faint. Uh, whereas if it's something, you know, magnitude 2, 3, or whatever it is, you're probably more in the region of almost photographing stars there, it's quite a bright thing. These are all interesting little bits of tools that you can use and then leverage to your own advantage, but the, the fact of the matter is, you don't actually have to know any of them. If you just kind of point your telescope to what you wanted to photograph and fire off an exposure, generally, if you can see the target in that exposure, even faintly, um, you can almost guarantee that it's gonna stack up well and deliver you a fine finished image. Um, the only things that I'd generally be looking out for in these single exposures, like during my imaging session, let's say right now, um, is let's say if I took a test exposure, I'd perhaps be looking around in brighter parts of nebula to see if any of it's clipped to white. It's very unlikely that it will happen, but there are a few targets that spring to mind where it would. Let's say for instance, uh, the Orion Nebula, the core of that is incredibly bright. and. Uh, Basically, I don't think I could shoot 10 minute exposures, at least at the gain that I use on my camera. Um, I'd probably have to use it at zero gain to take a 10 minute shot of that. But in that case, I'd take the exposure, I'd see that the car was overexposed, and then I'd decide I don't really want to proceed at this, and then try again with a shorter exposure. So perhaps I'd try a five minute exposure or a three minute exposure. Um, I guess. What I'm trying to say is I don't want you to get too hung up on whether the exposure you're using is perfect or not because as long as you're using a camera from within like the last five or six years any of these kind of new CMOS chips they, uh, they all have very low read noise and that's usually the limiting factor as to how short an exposure can go and still be usable. Um, and that kind of common factor among them 
uh, makes it very easy to choose a, a correct a usable exposure. There's a wide, wide range of, of acceptable lengths that'll uh, get you a fine finished image. So it's not really something you should worry overly much about. Just get out there and start shooting. Well guys, if you made it this far, thank you very much indeed for your time. It's uh, 20 past three in the morning, and as you can see, dawn's breaking behind me, and it's the end of night one. I've checked the weather, and it looks like night two is still gonna go ahead. Uh, so with that and tonight's data, I am really hopeful that I'll be able to take my best ever image of the Cygnus wall. Um, it just feels great to be back outside imaging again. I mean. Having like a long string of bad weather is always going to feel bad and uh, again on the flip side of that it's always going to feel great getting back out and imaging again but especially when you can spend this sort of time sharing it with others which I'm really enjoying doing and uh, shooting one of my favourite targets of all time. Uh, there's no wonder I'm feeling pretty good so thank you very very much indeed for watching. Uh, as I always say and I do mean it I genuinely appreciate all of you and your time. So thank you for watching, I look forward to seeing you next time and clear skies.